Hello, I'm Shalala Wen, and this is day 12 of 33 in my video series called Deepen. And if you're following along with me, then we've gone to some very interesting places and parts and even dimensions. And that journey continues with what I feel is probably one of the most unique and defining aspects of what we call soulful heart and it's called the gatekeeper and the gatekeeper is something i have mentioned as an energy of the meta soul in in other videos i especially talked about it in day 10 in the meta soul video so i really recommend watching that one first before this one if you can um, because in day 10 i really laid out what the metasoul is. Just a brief recap. It's essentially your individuated soul source, way up there, and the source for which the fragmentation happens into all of these other timelines and lifetimes happening all at the same time. And through the years, it took me a while. I stumbled on it in my own process. And as a community, we would share with each other and get a bit more clarity. Um, but what I really felt starting about 10 years ago was a very distinctive energy that was outside of the body. It was a fourth dimensional frequency. I didn't really think in terms of 4D back then, but that's how I would say it now. Yet it didn't feel like an angel or a spirit of a loved one or something like that. It felt critical to my soul. I just didn't know what it was, but it was very protective. And yet it also felt like it had a ton of divine wisdom and was a muse, yet it also felt wounded. So it took me a while, as I said, to really kind of stumble upon it. For many years, I called it a daemon, which is not demon, not evil. But daemon, which is a muse, a divine muse, it's a word that Socrates used. Because I think he too was feeling this energy and he just didn't know what to call it. And this energy of what we call the gatekeeper, I know some people refer to themselves as gatekeepers in terms of light working and the ascension paradigm. But when we say gatekeeper, we're referring to this very specific energy that I'm going to describe to you. And then in the guided meditation, we're going to hopefully have you meet yours today. And if that doesn't happen, that's fine, but it will start to get you into the realm and the energies of your gatekeeper. So going on with what I was sharing, what I realized eventually was that the key mission of this gatekeeper was to keep the veils in place to keep our veil of amnesia in all of these different timelines in place because of course if we had complete knowledge of all of the fragments of our soul then we wouldn't really immerse into whatever experiment of growth that we had signed on for for that timeline we would be all aware of each other and it would be unity consciousness it's kind of like what's the point of fragmenting then you might as well just stay in divine source. So the gatekeeper has actually a very important role. I, I get various images. I've met probably hundreds now over the years and they, they all pretty much have the same kind of frequency. Um, that's when I, I'm pretty clear that I am tapping into something that seems to be fairly universal. Although I don't wanna make that proclamation because I can't know that everybody has one but at least the souls that have been drawn to our work have one. And I always get this image of them almost like a jail warden with this jangle of keys, you know, a keychain around their waist, to jangle of keys and a whole bunch of doors. And that's actually where we're gonna meet them today, meet yours, hopefully. So they have this warden energy about them often where they're kind of burdened, um, they're always lonely because they essentially agreed to do this for the Metasoul. They agreed to split off from the divine. 
to become an energy that would be aware of all of these other timelines, but yet couldn't interface with them. So you can feel sometimes the gatekeeper, very often our gatekeeper becomes fused, as we call it, to some of these timelines, especially the ones that are really intense and have a lot of karmic energy. Sometimes when you meet your gatekeeper, they will show up or appear um, in the garb of that timeline. So if, if your gatekeeper looks Native American, for example, there's probably a connection to a timeline that has that energy. Or sometimes they may show up as, as um, a wizard or that kind of thing. And that's probably a timeline that they're connected to as well. As you work with your gatekeeper, what becomes really wonderful is that they go from being this burdened, lonely, overwhelmed energy to collaborating with you. They become a clearer and clearer channel of your soul's divine essence and gifts. So they become more and more out of the way. They get out of the way and allow more fluidity. So essentially, this aspect is really key to starting to remember other lifetimes and timelines. It's really this aspect that allows that to happen. That's why I feel, um, you know, for myself, I have a pretty fluid access to other timelines. And I feel this is because of the work that I've done with my gatekeeper, who a few years ago ascended, uh, just went back, feels like to divine source or to a higher frequency, and was replaced with a 5D energy of a bridging, uh, a part, an aspect called Bridget, actually. So it felt as if the gatekeepers are meant to do that eventually. Like, if you think about it, when we no longer want the veil, when as a soul we say, no, I want to remember, and I want to unify my meta-soul, I want, I want to bring all of these divergent fragments into a conscious place, because there are so many gifts to doing that. There's so much karmic aspects that you can heal. There's quantum impacts that that has on the collective. There's exponential healing associated with that. It's been such a nourishing ground to go into these other lifetimes and sort of, it's beyond a soul retrieval. It's really a soul unification. And the gatekeeper is critical to that. It really is an energy that makes that happen. And it's just such a gift considering how um, lonely and sad they are and how heavy they are often very overwhelmed by your awakening as well um, and usually when people connect with them in sessions they say oh I've been waiting for you almost every time the gatekeeper says oh finally thank you for finally connecting with me I've been waiting for you so there, um, there's one more distinction I want to make before we go into the meditation, and that is from the 3D protector to the gatekeeper. And what I found, I talked about the 3D protector in the day two video. I offered a meditation for you to meet that aspect. That one was probably more familiar to you. Um, they're, they're denser, more focused on 3D protection, this life, birth family, traumas from this life, they tend to be more armored, more focused on 3D content. So that's really been their purpose. It's taken me again a while to differentiate these energies. So the gatekeeper is more fourth dimensional. They're really in that, they're not really in our world. They witness our world, they view it through our bodies, but they're not in our bodies. And actually, I feel when the gatekeeper tries to come through into a body that that's possession. And it feels demonic because it's this intense energy trying to come through. That can also be another timeline coming through. So the way that the church has dealt with possessions, which they still are doing it the exact same way they've been doing it for thousands of years, which is a lot of fear and out demon you know, trying to expunge something rather than, oh, obviously there's an energy that wants to be felt. 
Um, what does it need and want? And then sometimes that can be the gatekeeper energy that wants and needs to talk with you and wants to be felt. So instead of being afraid, we become compassionate. And that's probably an overall theme for this series is about moving from battling anything to becoming an ambassador of the energy. So if we become an ambassador to this gatekeeper energy, then that allows it to start to defuse from darker timelines. It starts to get some relief. And then as it feels you showing up, you become this collaborative team that can go into these darker timelines with lots of love, lots of heart space of love leading the way to meet these aspects, sisters and brothers from the same soul source that need you. Um, one other piece about the protector and the gatekeeper, sometimes it is the same energy and it kind of vacillates. Um, I've noticed this with people, uh, it'll have a certain name as a protector, it will have the same name as a gatekeeper. Sometimes it'll be two distinctive energies it kind of seems to depend on just the soul and where they are. If someone's been deeply awakening for quite a while, they've done a lot of separation from birth family, they are teaching, sharing their gifts, their gatekeepers probably more comes forward as a dominant energy and the protector is less felt. Um, someone who's been more oriented, anchored to 3D and is in process of moving into their soul purpose, into their soul expression, that 3D protector is probably pretty um, dominant, we could say, and the gatekeeper is more recessive. So I'm going to share with you a writing that is on our website where I actually, my gatekeeper from, I think it's six years now, um, he kept shifting his name, but I think in this case he was Angel, and he writes to you about gatekeepers and what their purpose is, what their mission is, how they feel. There's, I believe, a writing from Kalena's gatekeeper in there too. And then there's some, um, actually there isn't some questions. I was gonna say there's questions. Um, we give you journaling questions to do with your gatekeeper if you start sessions with us, one-on-one -on -one sessions, and then we go deeper in to this energy and connect with it. But what I'm hoping to do today, because I have been they, they, call, they seem to call it their realm, and I have been to their realm so many times. What's so fascinating about it is it almost always looks exactly the same. So it doesn't matter who the person is or what their life experience is or even what country they come from. Their gatekeeper is in a fourth dimensional frequency. So it is in its own place, its own setting, and it seems to be a fairly consistent setting. So we will go there today and see what opens up. And even if you don't get connection, you don't see or feel anything, just the intention of beginning to connect with this aspects makes a difference. So we will go inward and see what happens. So go ahead and close your eyes. Start to bring your focus inward. Feeling your breath. See yourself surrounded by white light. It seems kind of misty today. It's a white mist. Almost not quite as thick as a fog. Kind of a mist. And I'm, I'm actually seeing that Archangel Michael is going to join us today, probably for the protection that he offers, the loving masculine protection. And then I'm actually seeing um, Dark Mother, who today appears to be 
cloaked. I did a video, I believe it's day seven with Kalena, where we introduced you to the Dark Mother energies. They're again, not evil. They're about death and rebirth, embracing change, and giving you the courage to go into shadow. So the, the gatekeeper has been in shadow to some degree for most souls. So I feel how the Divine Mother is helping us see them. She's helping us illuminate the way. So take in the energies of Michael and Dark Mother. Start walking along a path. It's in the same woods as your castle is, the castle that we've been going to in many of these meditations. But there's a divergent path going down into a tunnel or a cave. If you feel any fear or anxiety as you start moving downward through the tunnel, just check in with that and feel where that might be coming from. Feel the support of white light around you. Probably you feel some degree of excitement. Whatever you feel is good. We're going to walk through this tunnel together. I'm seeing that Michael has a torch, so that's nice. He's lighting the way for us. The tunnel eventually opens out into a large cavern. Large meaning a very high ceiling. You can't even see how tall it is. But it's clear that it's enclosed. There are tunnels going off of this large cavernous space maybe many tunnels and doors in front of the tunnels so sort of take this setting in maybe you feel like I said maybe parts of you feel afraid to be here it feels dark or lonely or scary, um, just offer some comfort to that part of you, maybe an inner child who we'll be meeting soon. But there's a, a lot of divine support and this cavern is essentially the portal to your meta soul. It's where your gatekeeper lives. So it's a very important place, even if it feels unfamiliar or filled with shadows or maybe even dark. The darkness also can sometimes be from darker timelines, especially lower 4D timelines. So if you feel some of that, that could be what that is. So again, just bring more white light in. You can ask Michael to do a sweep of, of the cavern with his energy. I like to see him with a wand rather than a sword. I don't see him with a sword because he's not battling anything. 
he's got a wand to clear energy. He's an energy of us that does that. So. so start to calibrate to this cavern. Think you will start feeling more comfortable here. we're going to ask your gatekeeper to come forward. They may have been hiding behind a, sometimes they're hiding behind a console. I'm not sure why. That's kind of a control or a command center. Sometimes they're in one of the tunnels and they come out. Sometimes they just sort of appear like wizards. So you're inviting yours to come forward to meet with you, to connect with you. Feel your heart space very welcoming. This again is the keeper of the veil that has allowed you to fully immerse in the experience that you've needed to have as a soul. It's an energy that has witnessed your meta soul for beyond time. You may even find as you take in your gatekeepers, as they start to come forward, that it's an emotional reunion. Take in what they look like, if you can see them. If they seem just like a white light or kind of a blob, or goo, you can ask them to come into more form for you. Sometimes they're just, they're just not used to being in form because they're energy. They should go into some kind of form that is familiar to you. They seem to like the Harry Potter movies and the Lord of the Rings movies and sometimes galactic. Star Trek and that kind of thing. So they will pick something often from your consciousness that you've taken in this life. So they can relate with you. I wanted to mention if you are having struggle to see them, you can also put your left hand on your third eye. Or I have people sometimes completely cover their eyes with their hands so that it's very dark. I have one facilitant that wears a sleep mask whenever we do this so that she can really go inward. So whatever you need to do, if you need to block the light a bit more, cut both hands over your eyes. I'm showing you. Um, because this is a, a lower 4D, it's a um, immersive and it's a a higher frequency, yet it's been more in the shadows. So it can take time to calibrate to it. Maybe as you do that, as you get more, block out more light, you can see more clearly your gatekeeper now. I feel more of them coming forward as they're kind of hesitant at first, like really? And kind of who's there and who's talking? It's like echo chamber, you know? And when they realize that your intention is pure, usually then they take a form. Sometimes also they can be dragons or unicorns. Again, whatever works for you. It would be rare that they would, they would go into a form that would scare you. But if they do, you can ask them to go into a different form that doesn't scare any parts of you. And they, they usually do shift. They really want to be known. They're just not used to it. So this is a bridge that we're creating today. Check in with what you feel as you feel your gatekeeper. Does your heart feel your emotional body?
if you hear anything, um, any messages from them, in, the, in that case, you can always cup your hands over your ears to amplify that one. Notice if there's any images they send you. They may just be kind of vibing to you that they're glad you connected with them and, and kind of, it's about time. That's usually, um, take in now if they want to tell you anything about this cavern and the doors that are there. These again are other timelines. You may notice as you're looking at the doors that some of them glow or vibrate or have an energy. And those might be doors that you go through. We will be doing that in a future meditation. We'll be going into timeline portals with our gatekeeper. But today, this is really about meeting this energy that has been with you this life and all the lifetimes so they have an amazing amount and wealth of knowledge about those lifetimes, about your soul purpose, about the karmic themes that you've signed up to learn and connection with the divine as they remember that they have that connection, which is what you help them with. Take in anything else that they want to share with you in this moment. And express whatever you would like to to them in an appreciative energy. It's usually important for this initial meeting. You may find I have people sometimes just overcome with appreciation and gratitude for this aspect of themselves as they meet them because they're just so clearly loyal and just so consistent and present. And I want to thank the gatekeepers today who let us meet them. I'm so appreciative of the job that you do, the mission that you've had, and I understand it's confusing as that mission is shifting. And to have so many souls now saying that they want to lift their veils and I understand the diverging energies that are coming through right now, especially from lower fourth dimensional timelines and how much you've had to hold. So I've just felt such honor in every gatekeeper I've ever met, forever long they let me connect with them Thank you for letting us visit your realm today. And my wish is that more and more of you can experience direct connection and love and remember your connection with the divine that it never left you. So follow, say goodbye to your gatekeeper and then follow Michael's torch back out of the cavern through the tunnel and back to the surface. And go ahead and open your eyes.
thanks for going on this journey with me. I have found this connection to be one of the most important ways of integrating and activating soul awakening and the ascension process. So I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you tomorrow.